Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Harsha Ali Khan. So actually in this unit number 5, we have two topics, CVP analysis and standard costing. So far I have completed the topic of CVP analysis. I have explained all the concepts of uh, CVP analysis. Uh, we have done so many problems on CVP analysis. Hope my regular viewers have already watched those videos. Now you are perfect on solving the problems on CVP analysis. Now in this video I am going to take up the second part that is standard costing and analysis of variance. Now in this part in this video, I'm going to explain you the meaning of the term standard cost, standard costing, advantages and disadvantages of standard costing. What do you mean by analysis of variance? These are the topics I'm going to explain you theory in this video. Next problem, my next video onwards, we'll start the problems on standard costing. So before starting, uh, take the screenshot of the points which I've written on the board, then I'll explain all the points in detail. <clears throat> so there are two types of costing, historical costing and uh, predetermined costing. The historical costing means the cost recorded after the cost is incurred. First of all, the cost is incurred, then it is recorded. It is called historical costing. The second type of costing is called predetermined costing. That means the costing takes place before the cost is incurred. What should be the cost in the next year? How much would be the cost in the next month? So before incurring the cost, we record the cost that is called a standard cost. Simply we can say standard cost is a predetermined cost. It is the cost recorded in advance. Now, the ICMA, Institute of Cost and Management Accountants, London, they have defined the term standard cost. Before learning standard costing, you must know what is the meaning of the term standard cost. It can be defined as predetermined cost, which is calculated from the management standard of efficient operations. Managements always strive for efficient operations. So for conducting efficient operation, what should be the predetermined cost set by the management? So in order to efficiently utilize the resources, the management has set the target that this should be our cost. So it's a predetermined and relevant necessary expenditure. This is the definition given by ICMA London. Now, first of all, standard cost is a predetermined cost means cost entered before it is incurred cost recorded in advance so it is determination in advance of what should be the cost so this a standard cost is a determination of what should be the cost in future then standard cost is a predetermined cost based this is the best definition which contains the main ingredients of standard cost standard cost is a predetermined cost based on technical estimate remember the standard cost is not just a guess uh, i mean uh, guess uh, i mean calculated value it is it is a, a technical estimate is applied in order to calculate the standard costing technical estimation is applied and uh, for a selected period of time this standard cost is not for the all the future period of time the standard cost is estimated for a particular selected period of time and for a prescribed set of working conditions. <clears throat> so three things you have to remember. Standard cost is a predetermined cost. Secondly, it is for a selected period of time. It is, by, it is calculated by using technical knowledge. By applying technical estimate for a prescribed set of working conditions, uh, selected period of time. So these are the main ingredients of standard cost. Now standard costing. So far we have discussed about standard cost. Now what do you mean by standard costing? Standard costing is the preparation of standard cost and applying them to measure the variations. 
So whatever we estimate, we will not actually achieve that one. Always there will be a variation between what we have planned and what we are achieving, what we are actually incurring. There is a difference that is called variation. Variation is the difference between the standard cost and the actual cost. So standard costing is the preparation of standard cost and the applying them to measure the variations from the standard cost and analyzing the causes of variations. See, standard cost is simply finding out the predetermined cost. Whereas standard costing involves calculating the standard cost, comparing the actual cost with the standard cost to find out the variation and analyzing the variations. Analyzing the causes of the variations to maintain maximum efficiency in production. Ultimate objective of standard costing is to attain maximum efficiency in the production process. Now, standard costing comprises the following. By studying the standard cost and the standard costing, four things will come out. What are the four things? First one, ascertainment of standard cost under each element of cost. First of all, the management has to ascertain or predetermined cost for every element of cost. The element of costs are material cost, labor cost, overheads. So we have to find out the standard cost of material, standard cost of labor, standard overheads, etc. Secondly, measurement of actual cost. We have already determined the cost in advance. Now we will incur actual cost. Now we compare the actual cost with the standard cost. Comparison of actual cost with the standard cost to find out the variation. Example, we have estimated that the, during the current year, 5 lakh rupees worth of material will be consumed. This is the standard cost. We have already prepared last year. Current year, when we incur the material cost, the material cost comes to 6 lakh rupees. The standard cost of metal, 5 lakh. Whereas actual cost of material comes to 6 lakh. So 1 lakh rupees more material has been consumed. The variation is 1 lakh. Now find out the variance. Analyzing of variances for the purpose of ascertainment of reasons for these variances. Simply make calculating the predetermined cost and calculating the actual cost comparing that is not the end of the matter. After finding out the variation, we want to find out the reason for the variations why the material cost is more compared to the standard cost what are the reasons for this variation this we have to analyze so all these four will come under standard costing calculating the standard cost calculating the actual cost comparing the standard and actual finding out the variation then analyzing the variation in order to find out the reason for the variations now Advantages of standard costing. There are many advantages of standard costing. In examination, you may get a theory question regarding explain standard costing and what are the advantages and disadvantages. So after watching this video, definitely you can be able to write in examination about these concepts. Advantages. Use of standard costing leads to optimum utilization of men material resources. A business is successful only when it utilizes all the resources efficiently. The resources are men, material, machines, all the facilities. If the business can successfully utilize all the resources, then the business will be successful. So standard costing will help in efficient utilization of all the resources. Secondly, it is useful as a yardstick for comparison of actual performance with planned performance. See, the management's main job is planning. But planning without controlling is a wasteful activity. Simply we have made the plans, no controlling. Then what is the use of making the plans? And controlling without plan is not possible. So both will go simultaneously planning and controlling. So by calculating, by making the standard costing, we can be able to control the activities. It is a yardstick. It is a standard to compare how much we have plan, how much we have planned, and how much we are achieving. It is very useful to management for discharging functions like planning, controlling, decision making, and making the price fixation. 
standard costing will be very very helpful to the management for performing its functions like the management has to plan has to control has to decide has to fix the price so in all these activities this standard costing will be a very handy tool will be very much helpful to the management for planning controlling decision making fixing the price etc it creates an atmosphere of cost consciousness see here nowadays there is a lot of competition in the market a business will become successful only when it can be able to control the costs so cost consciousness atmosphere will occur in the company if they implement standard costing because ultimate aim of this standard costing is wastages should be eliminated that means every resource should be efficiently utilized next one is it motivate worker to uh, i mean strive for accomplishment of defined targets this standard costing will help the workers because they will get more incentives the uh, the workers will get more incentive if they work hard if they achieve the target this standard costing will give the target to the workers if they achieve those targets they can get more incentives so in this way the workers are motivated to work more next one is its introduction leads to simplification of procedure and standardization of products by introducing the standard costing then what will happen there is standardization of the procedure the procedure will get standardized automated <coughs> these are few advantages of standard costing now i am moving on to disadvantages of standard costing the standard costing will also suffer from some disadvantages the first disadvantage establishment of standards may demand a lot of skill and experience see this standard cost cannot be arbitrarily fixed cannot be roughly fixed it requires lot of skill lot of experience lot of judgment then only standard cost can be fixed that's why it is said that standard cost is a predetermined cost based on technical knowledge technical estimate will be required for a prescribed set of conditions for a specified period of time so arbitrarily we cannot fix if we arbitrarily fix the standard cost we cannot be able to achieve that one so that's why the standard cost requires complete skill experience of the people then standards should correspond to current conditions for best results condition change very rapidly when we make the standard we estimate that these will be the condition in future but nowadays the conditions are so rapidly changing that it is difficult to achieve the target because the environment is completely dynamic what we have supposed next year but the next year completely different thing has happened so in this dynamic situation it will be difficult to, to make estimation or standards for the future next sometimes use of standard creates adverse psychological effect if standards are set too high sometimes if standards are not achievable if the standards are set at too high level then what will happen it will put an adverse psychological effect in the minds of the workers they cannot be able to achieve they are under pressure always because the standards are very high so it will have adverse psychological impact standard costing is usually suitable for organization whose procedures of jobs are repetitive if the jobs are unique if the jobs are unique then differ this standard costing cannot be applied the standard costing can be applied only where the same type of work is continued in a repetitive manner the same procedure is adopted then only we can apply standard costing next one lack of interest by appropriate level of management renders the use of standard costing ineffective first next thing is this standard costing concept must be understood and accepted by all the levels of management we cannot put standard costing in only one area the standard costing should be applied for all the elements of cost so it requires the coordination cooperation of different levels of management if the different levels of management are not coordinating then definitely the standard costing will fail to provide the results that's all 
So, so far I have explained you about standard cost, standard costing, advantages of standard costing, disadvantage. Now I am going to explain you about variance, analysis of variance. Now the problems are based on this analysis of variance. Actually variance means deviation. Deviation of actual cost from the standard cost. We have estimated the standard cost to be 5 lakh rupees. Whereas actual cost is 6 lakh rupees. The difference between actual cost and standard cost is called variance. So 1 lakh rupees is the variance. Now the comparison of actual performance with standard performance reveals the variances. By comparing the actual and standard we can be able to find out the variance. Seldom it happens that both are same. Because always there will be some uh, variation between the standard and the actual. <coughs> a variance represents a deviation of the actual result from the standard result. So this is the meaning of the term variance. It is a deviation of the actual cost and the standard cost. Now variances of different items of cost provide a key to cost control. The main purpose of this standard costing is controlling the cost. This variance analysis is the key to control the cost because they disclose whether and what extent standard sets have been achieved. So this standard costing is a part of controlling technique. Now favorable variance. Variances can be divided into two categories favorable variance and unfavorable variance. Favorable variance when actual cost is less than the standard cost. If the actual cost is less than the standard cost, it is called favorable variance. Example, we have set the standard material cost as 5 lakh rupees. So we expect that material cost would be 5 lakh. But when we actually incur material cost, it comes to 4 lakh. That means actual cost is less than the standard cost. It is called favorable variance. Secondly, unfavorable variance, opposite. The unfavorable variance is also called adverse variance, in which the actual cost is more than the standard cost. Suppose the actual cost is 6 lakh rupees, whereas standard cost is 5 lakh rupees only. So standard cost 5 lakh, actual cost 6 lakh. So 1 lakh rupees is called adverse variance or unfavorable variance. The analysis of variance is most suitable for cost control point of view. Just now I told you the main purpose of this standard costing is to control the cost. For the purpose of controlling the cost, this standard costing is applied. Now determination of variances is only the first step in the process of cost control. Finding out the variation, finding out the difference between standard cost and variable cost is only the first step. Of controlling the cost then what is the next step after finding out the variance find out the reason for the variance why this variance have arisen that is the main I mean uh, step of con cost controlling the final objective of variance analysis is to determine the person responsible for each variance and to pinpoint the causes of the incurrence of these variances finally after finding out the variance, we have to pinpoint who on whose incurrence this variance is arising, who is responsible for this variance. And this we can know only when we analyze the variance. Why this variance is occurring, we have to analyze and find out. Now, analysis of variance may be done in respect of each element of cost. <coughs> See here. There are different types of cost. Element wise, we have material cost, labor cost, overheads. So we can have the variances on cost and also on sales. So broadly, we have four categories of variances, material, direct material variance, direct labor variance, overhead variance and sales variance. But in this uh, syllabus, we have only two types of materials to be done. That is material variances and labor variances. So inshallah in the next video I'll give you the formulas for material variances and labor variances then we'll start the problem.